Welcome to section 5. In this section, we will visit some topics that become important when releasing your system to the public, such as user identification, permissions, and performance. In this video, we will explore the authentication world, getting to know the industry standards. Authentication and authorization are different things, which are usually done together. First, a user has to be identified or authenticated when he logs into the system. After he's proved to be a known user, he can get some permissions or get authorized to access the system operations. Both processes need to be properly done so they are hard to hack. Successfully attacking the authentication system usually results in a user impersonation, while attacking authorization means elevation of permissions. When talking about security implementations, it is extremely important to follow standards. Secure authentication involves cryptography, hash functions, padding, salting, one-time phrases, and messy redirects. It is extremely easy to get wrong, and a single bug can lead to stalling credit card information. In short, no custom implementation will ever have the level of attack proofing that a standard and certified implementation has. OAuth is a standard for authorization. It was only meant for securely assigning permissions to an already logged in user. But due to a lack of good standards for user authentication at the time, many developers started implementing authentication on top of OAuth by reusing some of the same calls to also verify the user and then retrieve his ID. As we already established, custom code means trouble in this area, and a standard implementation was required. The resulting standard was OpenID Connect, also called OIDC, which facilitates the user authentication over OAuth 2. These standards are used along with standard tokens and storage methods to create a secure end-to-end -end solution that keeps the system safe. Access tokens are short-lived entry tickets to your system. JWT, or JSON Web Tokens, are tokens written in JSON, which can be signed and encrypted. They are usually stored either in cookies or in a bearer header of the HTTP request. JWT tokens have three parts, the header, the claims, and the signature. The header contains the definition of the token and encryption parameters. The claims contain all custom information about the user and his permissions. And the signature contains the signed hash that can be verified to prevent tampering. JWT is simple and works in all popular languages. It is the recommended token format today. OIDC defines three flows. The implicit flow, which is meant for situations where we have no application level service between the client and the identity provider. As is the case in some JavaScript only applications served from CDN or in some native clients, which request data from the cloud without a middle tier. We can call it a front channel flow. The authentication code flow is the most secure and the most used flow. It is recommended for all clients, including mobile and native, and is usually implemented by opening a browser to do the credential exchange. The hybrid flow is similar to the authentication code flow, but it skips the code and directly sends back a token to the service. It is much less used than the previous two. In the implicit flow, the browser opens the identity services sign-in page where the user fills in his password. The form is submitted and the response redirects the browser back to the site URL, which was provided in the call, with the user ID and access token embedded in the URL. This flow is less secure than the other methods and should only be used for basic user details. Additionally, it does not provide a refresh token and the same process should be done again when the token expires. In the authentication code flow, the browser, which calls our UI service, is redirected to the identity provider to the sign-in page. When the password is given, it is then redirected back to the service with a code, which will be exchanged by the service for an access token that can be sent back to the browser for use in following transactions. This flow has the benefits of authenticating our service with the identity service and not having to expose the token to the browser. This is done by saving it in a secure cookie which is not exposed to the client-side code. There are five OAuth grant types. OIDC is built on top of OAuth, and the first two OIDC flows clearly follow OAuth grant types. Client Credential Grant 
is used for machine-to-API interactions like automation, which will be discussed later. The Resource Owner Credentials Grant is actually the common practice of sending the user password directly from the client to the API and receiving a token. It is not supported by an OIDC flow and is considered less secure since it implies trusting the native client to handle the password. Native clients are vulnerable to memory tampering or scripting attacks that can expose the password, while browsers have defenses in place to handle these risks. The guidelines say we should use authentication code flow for all clients by opening a browser to serve as a user agent and handle the initial authentication. At the end of the process, our application will receive the access token by listening to a port which will be called by the browser. This guideline, which can be counterintuitive at first, applies to mobile applications as well as desktop native apps. You should keep in mind that browser security and credential handling is a deeply researched subject and that is a good reason for this recommendation. Some of the interactions with the system will not involve a user, so filling a password form is not practical. For this kind of interaction, there are two methods of authentication. Using client ID, which means that the user which is logged into the system will create a client secret combo and authorize it to do some limited actions. This client secret credential will be saved in the machine that requires the API access and used to create access tokens. The second way is using a JWT assertion, which means a JWT token with a client ID in the claim section and signing it with a certificate on the client side. This method requires that the identity service trust the certificates from the client side. It is very important to keep the development process from getting stuck on login or certificates each time the developer system is refreshed. This can be achieved by creating a dummy security implementation that accepts default credentials and is used on the developer machines only. Generally, keeping the development loop in mind is a good idea. Making sure you can fit a basic set of services on the machine by using Docker Compose or Minikube and mocking cloud facilities like S3 Storage will make sure your dev team can deliver features quicker and with better quality.